All right, this is the ever so famous Amrite Double Roller Rage barrel with the new handle. It's a fairly new gun, not super new. Uh, I got this gun last summer. I've only used it a few times offshore actually. But you know, I was looking online on YouTube for videos of people maybe testing the gun out in the pool. Haven't found it. All the only videos I've seen are guys shooting some giant dog tooth tuna or fish like that, which is, I'm not complaining. Uh, that's definitely a good sign, but no one's really put a video out there actually testing this gun in the pool, really showing what it can do. You know, if you've been following spearfishing the past few years, you know roller guns have been hyped up a lot. Uh, a lot of guys are using them. And I'll also make a separate video on really my thoughts on roller guns uh, because it can get pretty complex if you ask me at least. Um, but yeah, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna test this spear gun. We're actually gonna go through a series of tests. Uh, the first one being kind of the initial rundown. We're gonna shoot the gun uh, with the basic setup. I got this gun from Aimrite uh, USA. And basically what they said on their website is the gun comes stock to shoot like a single roller. The reason for that is they can put thinner bands on there and make them a little bit longer to make it easier to load, I guess. Um, so basically what that means is the gun is not maxed out. There's still plenty of room to improve on the performance of the gun. Uh, but with that being said, what I'm gonna do for this test is shoot a 7.5 millimeter shaft. Uh, this gun was made for like eight mil up to nine mil shafts. And personally, I'm just gonna kind of spoil it here. That's where I think the gun really thrives. Uh, but for the initial test, we're gonna start with a 7.5 millimeter shaft. This gun is a 130, so we're gonna run 157 centimeter uh, slip tip shafts on there. And we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna shoot one wrap and I'll, and I'll kind of fill y'all in on the rest uh, once we get in the water. So. so to start, we're gonna go through the initial test and then I'll get into the rest in a minute. Well, here we have the Aimrite Double Roller, and we have it rigged out with a 7.5 millimeter shaft. This is a Rife brand shaft, and we got the mini shark fin tabs, and that's just so this back tab can actually clear the muzzle without interfering with the front wishbone. A standard size tab would actually brush the front wishbone upon the shot. Overall, we have a standard band set up from Aimrite Hawaii USA, and this really isn't maxed out as I've found. We have a lot of extra uh, room to play with to add power here. But moving down to the end, we have a standard 157 centimeter shaft for a 130 gun, and we have it rigged out with a slip tip, as you can see on the screen here. And uh, overall, yeah, we got 1.7 millimeter Dyneema shooting line. We have it rigged out with one wrap. That's just because my pool is not long enough, so we're gonna be testing the gun out really within the range of one wrap here. So basic setup, and as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be testing multiple factors here, but for this first test, we really wanna look at shaft width. So is the shaft coming out of the gun straight, or are we gonna have a slight veer to the left or right? So here I'm just reiterating on the low muzzle clearance and having the mini shark fin tabs actually allows for a cleaner shot uh, without any interference of the front wishbone. However, if you are going to be shooting the large shark fin tabs, if you just simply load both bands on the farthest tab back, uh, you won't have any issue clearing. So the only reason you would use the mini ones is if you actually do want to stagger your band load along your shaft. All right, so the first test we did was really looking at the shaft whip and looking at that, I didn't really see, I didn't see any at all. So that's a great sign. I think a lot of that is attributed to the smoothness of the shot, the very minimal recoil, you know, and some like standard guns that have a ton of power, they're very reliant as far as accuracy goes on recoil management or like the absorption of the recoil. So it's a really good sign to be able to see the double roller shooting the shaft straight out of the gun with one hand. Like I was shooting pretty loose grip uh, with one hand straight out of the get-go and so that's a great sign. Uh, the next test we're going to do is the accuracy test. Now um, initially on filming this video I wasn't really planning on doing a full rundown on all the different aspects of the gun test. I was really looking at the velocity. Uh, so 
I wasn't really trying to shoot for pinpoint accuracy. I was kind of just aiming at a, a general area. But having said that, the gun still shot pretty dang spot on to where I was aiming. If there was any error, it was definitely user error. I was using a super loose grip uh, and I wasn't really focusing on accuracy. Really, I just wanted to test uh, shaft whip and the velocity. So let's get into the accuracy. We had a pretty dang good result. All right, so we got two check marks for the accuracy and not having any shaft whip, and then I guess a third one for very, very minimal recoil. So, so far, so good. But now we're gonna get into what I really got in the pool to test the gun for, and that is the shaft velocity. Now, a lot of people don't really show you how fast the shaft is actually moving. They really focus on the accuracy and range, or say, penetration. Um, but you know, think about it. You, you need to have a shaft that shoots pretty fast, and, and considering you're here at point A and the fish is at point B, and most of the time the fish is swimming at a pretty pretty good rate. So with that being said, we're gonna be comparing the aim right shaft flight, the speed, with multiple different shafts. We're gonna start with a 7.5 and then work up to an eight mil shaft. So in theory, you would think the light shaft, the 7.5 is gonna shoot faster than the eight mil shaft. Uh, but on the other hand of that, the eight mil shaft should have a lot more penetration. So Theoretically, that should be the case. Um, with that said, we're gonna be comparing this to a Pathos Laser Carbon Open Pro. It's a 120 centimeter spear gun. But I do want to say the, the Pathos here, I'm actually gonna show y'all. So this Pathos gun is, is said to be a 120. Where does it say? It says, I gotta block my face out so it focuses on the spear gun there, but this is a 120, right? However, this gun has a reverse mech and this thing is recessed really far back on the handle here. Let me focus it for y'all. But yeah, take a look at how far back the mech starts and then the barrel starts here. So with that being said, I actually measured the guns, their lengths I'm about to sneeze. And so basically what I concluded, measuring from the mech right here, all the way down to the end of the barrel where the carbon meets the where the carbon meets the muzzle, this gun is actually 130 centimeters from because of the reverse mech. So uh, I think that makes our test a little more, I guess, I guess it'll make it a better comparison. We're really looking at a double roller versus a standard gun in terms of, we're gonna be comparing their performance. You know, like I said, the whole roller hype, everyone says they shoot way better. Now I'm aware that they recommend to shoot roller guns in sizes like less than 110, but I thought it'd be interesting to compare what a double roller can do versus a standard gun. Uh, so, so what we're gonna do is compare the shaft velocities. We're not really gonna be looking at the accuracy. Both guns are super accurate. Um, so what I did was kind of film a couple different angles on the shaft flying and hitting the target. So we're gonna get a good look at the shaft speed with that and I'm gonna be testing the 7.5 and the eight mil shaft on the double roller to give you all an idea of kind of how they vary. One thing to take note of, I guess I forgot to mention as well, this aim right is a 130 and uh, I measured from the handle to right here. Aim right measures their guns uh, differently than some of the other manufacturers. They measure from the mech here. So starting at the mech, so starting at the mech right there, they measure all the way down to the front roller. So to right here where my finger is, that's how they measure and from that length, from the mech to the front roller is actually 130 centimeters. So pretty much these guns are the same length. Uh, it's funny because this is a 130 and that's called a 120, but it really varies upon the brands. Uh, so basically we're gonna have a pretty even test. The only thing that is going to vary uh, quite significantly, I guess you can say, is the shaft length. So this aim right is shooting a 157 centimeter shaft uh, for the tests. I do actually have another shaft I wish I would have shot for this test. Uh, it's so a 7.5 and it's a little, I think it's like a 147, but it fits perfectly in this gun. Um, but anyhow, we're gonna be shooting that in the aim right, but the Pathos gun, um, is, we're gonna be shooting 137 centimeter shaft. So I guess that's gonna be kind of a skewed test here. We have a way lighter shaft in the Pathos. 
However, I still thought it would be interesting to see the performance differences considering that's a double roller. You think, wow, roller guns are so great, but what would a double roller do, right? No one's really shown it in the pool. So that's what I really wanted to do today. I guess I should stop talking. Let's get into the video, show the comparison pathos versus a double roller. So with the shaft velocity test done, that was the standard stock setup of the Aimrite double roller, like I said before. And keep in mind, this gun does not max out at all. That was, there's still plenty of room and power to be put on the gun. With that being said, I did take some notes. I'm just gonna read it to y'all uh, because there was a lot, some things I wanted to say. So uh, in this test, I only shot one wrap and I know rollers are really known for their performance past one wrap. Um, However, to shoot farther, you need a shaft to shoot faster. But in this test, you know, two 7.5 mil shafts, those things shot pretty much the same speed, uh, give or take. I mean, I'm gonna let you guys decide. I can't really see much of a difference. Um, but so basically, to shoot farther, you need more velocity coming out. You gotta shoot faster, so, you, in, that, so in that respect, you can go farther, you know what I'm saying? So, can't tell if I'm really getting my point across, but I hope y'all understand. Um, so that way it can make the farther distance with power. So power is just as important as accuracy at range. So even if the gun shoots that far accurately, you, you still gotta have power. And with that power, you need speed to get there. Um, but like I said, in this test, the velocities were very close. Um, and there was a significant advantage or much, hold, what the heck did I write? With that in mind, there's no significant advantage or much of a difference uh, when shooting the double roller with a 7.5 shaft. I think really what happened in this test is, um, at least for the 7.5 shaft, what the most important part of the shot pertains to is the, the initial acceleration of the shaft. So what I noticed was the Pathos gun, when you shoot, those bands, all of the power is released and it's full four shafts flying. And I think that initial acceleration really propels the shaft um, for that, for the distance. And the roller gun, I think once it got to the point where you get that extra band stretch, that extra push, the shaft had already reached the max velocity. Now that's the case for the 7.5, but what we're gonna do next, um, I'm actually gonna tighten up the pretension on the gun. I'm gonna leave the bands at 28 and 30 inches. I'm just going to, I'm just going to increase the pretension. I think it was at about 15 centimeters, give or take. There's still room to add pretension there as well, but I don't really wanna sacrifice the ease of loading. Um, so we're gonna do that test and we're gonna do a 7.5 shaft and an eight mil shaft. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna say I was extremely surprised by the eight mil shaft here. And I think that's where this gun really, really shines is these heavier shafts. And I, this is a theory, I might regret saying this later. However, I think with the eight mil shafts being heavier, they require more force, I guess, to get them going faster. So with the 7.5 mil shaft, it kind of just launches out of the gun, right? But an eight mil shaft needs that little extra push. And I think that's where the double roller really shines is being able to push that shaft, that extra extra length of the gun to really get it going. That's just kind of my theory. I'm not sure how correct I am on that, but I think it has something to do with the heavier shafts. So I think the roller really aids the heavier shafts uh, when shooting in that sense. But the 7.5, I really didn't see a significant difference. All right, this is the double roller rigged out with added pretension as I've done here with the green line. And moving up toward the end of the gun, we're using the same 157 inch 7.5 millimeter shaft with slip tip. And we also are gonna be using 400 pound uh, monofilament shooting line. Once again, shooting one wrap. And I actually forgot to mention on the eight mil shaft, we're gonna be shooting 300 pound mono. This isn't something I typically use, but we're just gonna use it for the test here.
All right, so that about wraps up our test. In conclusion, I would say the extra pretension really helped the performance of the gun as well. The 8mm shaft really showed what that double roller can do. Um, whenever it hit the target, you can just really see how hard it's hitting. This gun easily is going to shoot farther than one wrap. Overall, pretty good comparison. I mean, I got to give it to the patho, so that gun shot pretty dang good compared to a double roller. But with that 8mm shaft, the double roller really proved to be a pretty dang good gun. So with that said, I wanted to mention, I reached out to Aimright Australia on how they rig their bands. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> for a 130 gun, he said, for a 130 centimeter gun, he said, I don't want to tell you all the wrong thing, so I'm going to check it here. Um, 65 centimeter and a 70 centimeter band, both at 14 millimeters with 20 to 25 centimeter pretension. So <clears throat> that's definitely a little bit shorter than the bands that I got running. Uh, I think I'm running like 20 centimeters of pretension now, so probably three or four inches uh, less on those guns, but they're also rigging those guns with nine mil shafts. So um, <clears throat> overall, I'm happy with the test. The gun shot really good. Hopefully you guys found some value out of this. I could not find any double roller videos anywhere pool testing. Another thing, I apologize, the pool was a little bit dirty. There's a little leak, so we can't really run the filter on there. Anyhow, that's what I got for today. If you guys want to see more spear gun videos, test stuff like that, anything like this, um, let me know down below. Gear talks, you know, anything like that, let me know. We'll make it happen. Until then, I'll see y'all in the next video.